United States of America to discuss possible solutions to the fall armyworm spread in Africa. Well, on Thursday, screen two Joy News Hotline documentaries on the invasion. The environmental justice series organized by students at the Cornell University will screen rampaging soldiers and poison on the menu produced by Joy News' Joseph Opokugapo. The event will seek to highlight the damage being caused to the environment and human health by dependence on pesticides to deal with the pests. Opokugapo will join other experts from Africa to discuss alternatives to dealing with the pests in a more sustainable manner. He's been speaking about tomorrow's event and he joins me live uh, from the United States of America. Hello, Joseph. Uh, tell us a bit more about what's happening at the moment. You've been there for a while and you're expecting that your uh, documentary will be screened, but so far, what exactly is happening towards you know dealing with this problem what are some of the ideas that are being bounced off i mean that you, you all are bouncing off one another about dealing with this uh, uh fall army worm invasion so you'd recall that the documentary um rampaging soldiers um highlighted how there was a lot of uh, complaints coming from farmers that there's been repeated incidents of the use of the Governments approved pesticides to deal with the problem, but then they mm. weren't going away. And then the scientists were explaining that there's been situations of um, the pests evolving as a result of the continuous application of the pest. Well, one of the main suggestions that have come up, which actually came from the Food and Agriculture Organization, has been that to a certain extent there is a need for African governments to move away from dependence on pesticides to deal with this particular problem. So mainly that has been the focus of the conversation. Um, a number of ideas have been banding about in some of the conversations that we've had about how to sustainably deal with this. Uh, for example, and in areas like the Americas and the Brazil, they, they've been able to a certain extent control it using the biological uh, uh, enemies of these pests. And then they get them onto the field and then they chew them up. So, to a large extent, they wouldn't have to rely too much on pesticides. There's been conversations around integrated pest management measures where you are not exactly relying on chemicals, but uh, you are using incidents, including uh, using the uh, natural break okay. to help you with it. So, those are some of the ideas. And right. the, the, one of the reasons why we're we highlighting uh, those particular journeys documentaries also has to do with uh, the situation with poison on the menu. You'd recall it highlighted concerns about increasing cases of yeah. uh, food poisoning thanks to pesticide application. So those are the human health consequences that this conversation will be attending. I see, but the talking about the solution, the, the, the sort of ideas that you say are being branded about, is, the, the, is it just me or does it sound like there's a certain talk that is sort of linking this to uh, genetically modified uh, foods? So, um, well, that's one of the suggested solutions, although um, not everyone buys into that particular idea. Um, there have been talk about more sustainable ways to deal with this than that. So, obviously, um, it, it, it's one of the ways in Brazil, for example, it helps them to deal with this to a certain extent when it comes to um, cow pee and, 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 and attack on that, and even when it comes to the corn that they use. But um, in, in, in the conversation that we have, in, in, for example, bringing a panel involving folks from Uganda and also um, Tanzania. These are African countries where genetically modified foods are actually not produced. And so the researchers and the scientists there are not focusing on that as an alternative to help deal with this particular problem. They are looking at more sustainable ways around it, ways where they can use um, locally produced um, chemi uh, 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 you know, pest control measures and locally produced material which are not exactly pesticides to help deal with it. Those are some of the ideas that we will be seeking to explore and not exactly um, technology that is not familiar within the African terrain. This is mainly a conversation that focused on the African environment and as much as possible, it's what people in Africa are familiar with that the focus would be on. Cited yourself, um, I'm Joseph, but certainly the issue of uh, genetically modified foods is one of the conspiracy theories. And you, you were here in the studio, we had a chat about this. But the fact that one of the conspiracy theories is that the fall army worm indeed perhaps is some sort of uh, an invention to begin to make G GMOs attractive to countries like Ghana that don't really seem to subscribe to that idea. Did that also come up in your discussion? 
You know, it, it's a question that we all ask in, as to how this um, Falami organization found its way to the African continent. Mm. And um, it's become a very topical issue. We've not had it for many years. In fact, the first time that we saw it getting onto uh, farm fields in Africa was sometime early last year. And then we, we, we really saw it becoming a big issue in the course of the year. Um, unfortunately, we've not been able to figure out how that came about. So all of those conspiracy theories that you put it are being thrown out there as to, uh, you know, maybe how come someone wants to sell the technology and then that becomes um, a way around it. But, hey, th th this is a scientific conversation where you'd want to adduce as much evidence as possible to back whatever claim or allegation you would want to make when it comes to that. And obviously, once you don't have it to back it, then you, you probably stay away. But the, the reality is that um, some of the theories, which are not conspiracy theories, that are being uh, adduced as to how come we've seen this first invading African fields is climate change. Because we, we've seen situations of um, environment in Africa getting a lot more warm and some areas getting even cold to a certain extent. And we've seen situations of um, the water bodies becoming a, a lot more warmer. And so all of these are creating environments which are making it a lot more possible for some of these invasive pests to move from continent to continent. And that's something that uh, science can back in terms of how come this could possibly be the reason. And so that's how come we are having this conversation, for example, because climate change has to be dealt with to a certain extent. Right. And the, the issues about how uh, even in Africa and other parts of the world, continuous use of pesticides to deal with some of these problems is resulting in increased destruction to the environment, which okay. has to be looked at, hence the call for more sustainable alternatives around it. We'll be getting in touch with you again, uh, uh, Joseph, tomorrow to see how uh, the screening goes and the sort of ideas that come up from that as well. But uh, do have fun. Enjoy it while it lasts, because when you come back, it will be still, you still have to deal with uh, a bit of journalism and stress. <laughs> All right. Joseph Opoku Gakbo, there. Congratulations to you once again. His uh, documentaries are being screened at the Cornell University in the United States of America tomorrow. We'll bring you some more on that. And finally, the much awaited Renault, Coleos, and Kaja have made their way to Ghana. The launch of the cars took place today in Accra. Speaking at the launch, CEO of Renault, Jihad Hijazi, called on Ghanaians to purchase the two brands and have an experience of a lifetime. This vision is a vision of cleanliness, a vision of organization, a vision of very, very nice atmosphere, a vision of innovation, and a vision of high-tech digital show. So, in other words, we are not just simply going to walk into a Renault store and look at a vehicle and say, oh, you know, I like this vehicle, let me buy it. This is supposed to be an experience. Okay, so you walk in, you are supposed to talk to people who are very knowledgeable about sales executive and consultants who are extremely knowledgeable about our products. Now, to complement a Renault store, Renault has gone the extra mile to make sure that our product is also exceptional. Just as much as the vision itself is exceptional, the store is exceptional, the vehicles have to be exceptional also. This vehicle doesn't only have a blind spot detection or a tailgate, it has even more impressive features that you will find in vehicles that are over $100,000. Some of those are a navigation system that actually works here in Ghana. So the vehicle has a 10-inch tablet that allows you to function a navigation system. You want to give yourself a treat of a lifetime? Go for it. Well, on his part, the marketing manager, Shirley, Shiri Bokete Manison, says the Renault brands of cars are here to stay and serve everybody regardless of your status. We've realized that, um, and with our partnership with other automobile companies, it's not just about um, just serving the value market, okay, but we are looking at cutting across to serve the high-end market as well. We are looking at offering vehicles for various classes of people across professions, across age brackets, across income levels. So we are looking at vehicles that serve, serves everybody. Now, um, when you look at the Duster and then the Logan and then the Sandero, 
we are talking of vehicles that are very moderately priced. Okay, for as low as 11,950, you can get a Renault Logan, basic level. I want everybody to hear that we are here to stay. We are here to make a statement and we are here to grow.